Preparing injections. Check accuracy and completeness of each medication administration record, or MAR, or computer printout with prescriber's original medication order. Check client's name and medication name, dosage, route, and time for administration. Recopy or reprint any portion of MAR that is difficult to read. Review pertinent information related to medication, including action, purpose, side effects, and nursing implications. Assess client's body build, muscle size, and weight. Standard steps. Okay. So you're going to go into your room and you're going to knock on the door, into the room, wash your hands, identify your client by three, uh, three identifiers. You're going to ask his name, full name, date of birth, and check his ID band. Check date of expiration for medication vial or ampule. Okay, so then you're going to obtain your medication from your drawer. First check, be sure to compare the label of the medication with the MAR while preparing the medication. Okay, so you're going to give an ampule and you're going to have a vial. And you're also going to have a powder, making sure that you check the expiration date on each of your vials. Okay. Second check prior to returning medication to drawer. Okay, so after you have um, checked all your medication before you return it to the drawer. That is when you will do your second check. Ampule preparation. Okay, we're going to do one at a time. So we're going to start with the ampule. Tap top of ampule lightly and quickly with finger until fluid moves from neck of ampule. You're going to make sure that you obtain um, a filter needle um, in order to draw up your ampule. Your filter needle uh, must say filter on it. So whatever gauge you may have for a filter needle, but make sure that it says filter on it. The reason that you need a filter needle is because the ampule itself, once you open it, um, it has a scored section. And on that scored section, it may drop little pieces of glass into the medication. So you must, if you have not been doing it before, you must use a filter needle with an ampule. Now, what you're going to do, did you say this already? <laughs> is you're going to gain a gauze. Okay, what am I gonna tap with? I'll use my ink pen or you can use your finger. Whether you tap it this way, the medication that's in the top of the ampule will go down or you can use your pen and lightly tap either one that you want. So all your medication is down into the actual ampule. Okay. Place small gauze pad or unopened alcohol swab around neck of ampule. Now I prefer the gauze rather than um, an alcohol swab. Um, just make sure that it's large enough so that it covers the scored area so you don't cut your hand because sometimes that breaks off and it's um, very jagged and you'll cut your thumb and it, it gives a really ugly cut. Snap neck of ampule quickly and firmly away from hands. Okay, so you're going to snap it away from you. All right. Draw up medication quickly using filter needle long enough to reach bottom of ampule. Okay, so you're going to remove the needle that's on here. Attach your filter needle. long needle and you can actually invert your ampule and you'll see that the fluid doesn't come out okay you're going to insert your um, needle into your ampule and you're going to withdraw your medication 
keeping your needle down below the level of your medication. And if you need to tilt it to the side to get the rest of your medication out, then you can do that. your medication is out. If air bubbles are aspirated, do not expel air into ampule. Okay. To expel excess air bubbles, remove needle from ampule. Hold syringe with needle pointing up. Tap side of syringe to cause bubbles to rise toward needle. Draw back slightly on plunger and then push plunger upward to eject air. Do not eject fluid. all of the air, check your uh, syringe, and make sure that you have all of your bubbles out of your syringe. If syringe contains excess fluid, you sink for disposal. Hold syringe vertically with needle tip up and slanted slightly towards sink. Slowly eject excess fluid into sink. So this gives me about 1.8 milliliters. If that was more than what I am supposed to deliver with this uh, dose, then what I would do is I would go to the sink, tilt it just a little bit, and remove the excess. Cover needle with its safety sheath or scoop needle to recap. Okay, so you never uh, recap. What you're going to do is scoop, one hand method, making sure you keep your other hand away, until the needle is actually in to the cap, then you can use your other hand. Remove that needle, which is your filter needle, and you're going to put your needle that you're going to deliver the medication with on. Vial containing a solution. Okay, so that's our first uh, medication using an ampule. Your next one is your vial using a solution. A vial can be either glass or plastic. Okay. Remove cap covering top of unused vial to expose rubber seal. Keeping a rubber seal sterile. If a multi-dose vial has been used before, cap is already removed. Okay, so this one is a multi-dose. And so the uh, cap is already removed, the plastic cap. Firmly and briskly wipe surface of rubber seal with alcohol swab and allow it to dry. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but this is actually some powder that's on um, the cap on the rubber stopper itself. And so you want to make sure you do a good scrub because not only are you removing any medication that may be there, but any organisms that may be on that rubber stopper. And then allow it to dry. Pick up syringe and remove needle cap or cap covering needleless bile access device. Pull back on plunger to draw amount of air into syringe equivalent to volume of medication to be aspirated from vial. Okay, so if I am going to give um, according to my order and what I've calculated, if I have to give one ml of medication, then I'm going to pull back only one ml of air, milliliter, okay. With vial on flat surface, insert tip of needle with beveled tip, entering first through the center of rubber seal. Okay, so you want to make sure that um, the vial is down on the flat surface. You're not doing it up in your hand, but on a flat surface, and you're going to put it in the center of the uh, rubber stopper making sure that your needle does not go down into the medication. All right? Apply pressure to tip of needle during insertion. Inject air into the vial's airspace, holding on to plunger. Hold plunger with firm pressure. Air pressure within the vial sometimes forces the plunger backward. Sometimes if there's too much air, maybe someone's been, one of the uh, nurses have been putting in too uh, milliliters of air, but they only need to draw out one milliliter of medication, then you'll find that it's going to be hard to push this air in. So you only want to draw up the amount of air 
as the amount of medication that you're going to insert. Insert vial while keeping firm hold on syringe and plunger. Hold vial between thumb and middle fingers of non-dominant hand. Grasp end of syringe barrel and plunger with thumb and forefinger of dominant hand to counteract pressure in vial. Okay. Keep tip of needle below fluid level. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. You're below the fluid level when you're withdrawing. Allow air pressure from the vial to fill syringe gradually with medication. If necessary, pull back slightly on plunger to obtain correct amount of solution. Okay. When desired volume is obtained, position needle into vial's airspace. Tap side of syringe barrel carefully to dislodge any air bubbles. Eject any air remaining at top of syringe into vial. Okay. Here we go. Remove needle from vial by pulling back on barrel of syringe. Again, the scoop method to recap. Hold syringe at eye level at 90 degree angle to ensure correct volume and absence of air bubbles. Remove any remaining air by tapping barrel to dislodge any air bubbles. Draw back slightly on plunger, then push plunger upward to eject air. Do not eject fluid. Recheck okay. volume of medication. Okay, so if you're doing that, in, let's say you did have air bubbles at the bottom and you pull back your, um, well before you pull back, you tap and the air goes to the top. You now have to pull your plunger down to get all your medication that was in the needle, in the hub, down into your uh, syringe, and now push out all air up to your correct volume. Here we go. Make sure everything is good before you set that vial, that syringe down. If medication will be injected into client's tissue, change needle to appropriate gauge and length according to route of medication. Okay. So if that's going to be a um, IM, For multi-dose vial, make label that includes time and date of mixing, concentration of medication per milliliter, and your initials. Okay, so I have the date, I have the time, I have the medication, the concentration, whatever number of milligrams per milliliters, and my initials. And I would apply that to my vial. Vial containing a powder reconstituting medications. Now this is fun. I remember when I was going to nursing school, I couldn't wait to get to this. Was this in the way? Okay. I couldn't wait to get to reconstitution. Okay. Remove cap covering vial of powdered medication and cap covering vial of proper dilutant. Firmly swab both seals with alcohol swab and allow to dry. Cap of your medication, the cap of your dilutant, and even though um, we think, oh, that should be sterile, you still have to swab, swab it off. Each of them, and this, I suggest you do them both at the same time. Do a good scrub. And allow them to air dry. Draw up dilutant into syringe following steps two through eight. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing that we did 
with the other. Insert tip of needle through center of rubber seal, a vial of powdered medication. And not yet. Try my dilutant first. Remove needle. Mix medication thoroughly. Roll in palms. Do not shake. And you have to look at it and make sure it dissolves. 